Sample preparation involves sealing a specific quantity of sample material into a tin capsule. If there's the possibility of carbonates in your samples, you will need to acidify them prior to combustion to remove any inorganic carbon. There are various methods for removing carbonates, and I can provide you with some references to decide which technique is best for your type of samples. For nitrogen analyses, you will need to analyze non-acidified samples since the acid treatment has been shown to alter nitrogen isotope values. Once the samples are dry and homogenized, we will need to determine the ideal sample size. For many biological tissues, the percent carbon is between 40 and 50 percent, and the percent nitrogen is between 10 and 20 percent. So a typical mass that is ideal for our system is one milligram of biological tissues. It is always a good idea to consult with the CLIP lab prior to prepping your samples so we can work out ideal masses for your specific sample types. Here I will walk you through the process of encapsulating your samples. You will need a microbalance that weighs out to one microgram, ethanol and pure water for cleaning utensils and surfaces, a sheet of aluminum foil, a 96 well plate for holding samples, tin sample capsules, a marker and tape to label your tray, forceps, a spatula, a sample preparation plate, compressed air, and gloves. You also need a laptop computer and a copy of the sample ID template for recording your weights. The ID field is filled out with the same name you labeled your tray. Fill your name as the preparer, the date you weighed the samples, the brand and size of your capsules, and any additional notes on your samples such as type of material, estimated percent compositions, etc. The size of capsules that you will use depend on your type of sample and how much material you need to weigh. A 6x4 size is good for 1 milligram of biological tissues. Smaller capsules are good for small sample sizes of carbon, where a lower blank is desirable. Larger capsules are necessary for samples such as sediments or material on filters, where the physical size is large. It's always a good idea to check with the CLIP lab to determine the ideal capsules for your application. At the microbalance station, you will need to set up a clean work area. I wipe down the balance and counter space with a little alcohol and Kim wipe, then place a fresh piece of aluminum foil in the area I am working. This is designated as my clean zone. The utensils are cleaned with high purity water, then ethanol, and blow dried with compressed air. We have a clean air compressor in the lab, but canned air can be purchased that will work as well. Now I can start weighing samples. Tear an empty capsule on the balance. Then place some sample material into it. It may help to lightly tap the spatula to transfer the sample material to the capsule. Weigh the capsule with your sample, then add more if necessary. If there's too much, I toss the capsule out and start over if I have enough extra material. As you weigh samples, you'll quickly get a feel for how much material you need. Once you are within 10% of your target mass, you can seal up the capsule. I first crimp the top closed, then fold over. I slowly pinch it together on all sides. I do this very tightly with only one milligram of sample. It is unlikely to burst the capsule. With larger samples, such as sediments with low amounts of carbon and nitrogen, you will need to be careful not to puncture the capsule as you ball it up. After sealing, you can place it back on the balance and verify the mass. Remember that the percent compositions that we calculate for you use the mass that you provide us, so it needs to be accurate. Once the capsule is sealed, place it in the 96 well plate in the position that matches the sample ID sheet. 
your encapsulated samples should resemble the examples on the left. These are compact with no trapped air and no flat edges that can jam our carousel mechanism. The two capsules on the right are too large and would not fit in our carousel wells. Any trapped air in them would introduce ambient carbon dioxide and nitrogen contamination. The wells in our standard carousel are four millimeters in diameter, which means the capsules must be less than this. For sample types that require larger amounts of materials, such as soils and sediments, we can use a carousel that has eight millimeter diameter wells, but it decreases the total capacity by half. Once the tray is finished, tape the top closed and contact the clip lab to set up delivery of the sample tray. Before delivering the tray, tap it against the table several times and check if any material has escaped from your capsules. If so, you will need to re-encapsulate those samples prior to turning them over to us.